Welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over Cartopy. Cartopy is a Python package designed for geospatial data processing in order to produce maps and other geospatial data analysis. This is just going to be an introduction to Cartopy, so if there are other types of maps you're interested in, just let me know in the comments. Also, we're going to move pretty quickly through the examples in this tutorial. However, the notebook with all the code that we go over will be on GitHub. And I'll put a link for the notebook in the notes for this tutorial. A couple more notes. Two terms that you will use to create your maps include projection and transform. The projection argument determines what the plot looks like. The transform argument tells Cartopy what coordinate system your data are defined in. It can be easy to get confused about what the projection and transform keyword arguments actually mean. So if you want to understand that better, you can go to this link right here at scitools.org. And if you walk through these examples, this will give you a pretty good understanding of how to use the transform and projection keywords. To access the documentation, you can go to scitools.org using this link right here. Okay, so these are most of the imports that we're going to use. And as I mentioned before, don't worry too much about the specifics because this notebook will be on GitHub. Let's go on to our first example. One way that you can create a basic map is to use plt.axis and inside the round brackets, define your projection. And here in just a second, we'll show you examples of all of the different projections. We've gone ahead and signed that to the map1 variable. Then we reference our variable, and for a very basic map, we're just going to use the coastlines. So we use dot coastlines. Here we have another example with slightly different code. Again, this just creates a basic map. The first thing we have done is we've gone ahead and created a figure. Then we reference our figure dot add subplot. Then inside the round brackets, we assign our projection. Here. Once again, we're just going to show the coastlines, so we reference our variable dot coastlines. If you would like to change the size of your map, then you can use plt.figure, and inside the round brackets, we use fig size, and then we put in our numbers to determine the size of the figure and the map. Let's change the size again and make the map larger. Okay. So in the previous examples, we just added the coastlines. Another way to add features to your map is to use this import here. We import cartopy.feature as C feature. We've gone ahead and created our figure and our map. Then we use the map variable, add feature. And inside the add feature round brackets, we determine the features that we want to add. In this case, we've gone ahead and added land, ocean, coastline, borders, lakes, and rivers. And then there's also a stock image feature that's slightly different from the other features. So let's go ahead and run this. And if we comment that out, you can see the difference. So you could use any combination of these features that you would like. If you would like to save your map, here we have an example of that. We've gone ahead and created our figure and our map, and we've added the coastlines. In this first example, we're going to save this to our desktop as a PDF. In this example, we're going to save this to our desktop as a PNG. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's go to our desktop and take a look. Here we have a preview of the PDF. And here's a preview of the PNG. Next, let's go over how to plot some locations with some labels. In this example, we're going to use the airport's data frame from the Vega datasets, and it looks like this. Once again, we've gone ahead and created our figure and our map. If you would like to zoom in or out, or only show a certain part of the map, then you can go ahead and use your map variable dot set extent, and then put in the coordinates. In this example, we've added the states as a feature and the coastlines. Then we go ahead and loop over our airport state frame. Then we reference our map variable 
and we use the scatter plot. We put in the longitude and the latitude. And we've also added text labels here. Let's run it. And you can see we have plotted 10 of the airports in our data frame. The next example is very similar, and we've pretty much set the code up the same. However, we've added a size element to the data frame here, which will be the size for the bubbles that we plot onto the map. These size elements are arbitrary. However, a good example for the size elements would be population. We've gone ahead and created our figure and our map. And once again, we loop over the data frame. We put in the longitude and the latitude. And to get the size element, we use S for size. And since we added a marker size column to the data frame, we access the size element with that here. Next, don't worry about this code too much because we're just going to use this to show the different projections. However, this is an example of how you could create subplots. So here we have visuals of all of the different projections. And this is another projection that we have created in a slightly different way. And this is the UTM projection. Next, if you would like to add latitude and longitude to your map, you can do that. Here we've created our figure and our map. Then we want to go ahead and create our grid lines, so we reference our map, dot grid lines. For the draw labels, we set that to true. Then we reference the grid lines, dot x formatter and dot y formatter. And we assign the longitude and the latitude. And just a quick reminder, we imported that here. So you can see we have our latitude and longitude labels. Here we have another example. However, instead of north, south, east, and west, we just have negative and positive. And you can see the code for that here. If you would like to add map tiles to your map, you can do that. So here we've created our figure. And to access the image tiles, we import cartopi.io.imageTiles as C I M G T, Cartopi Image Tiles. So to access the tiles, we reference C I M G T. And in this case, we're using stamen. And inside the round brackets, we put terrain background. So here we've gone ahead and created our map. We've gone ahead and set our extent. Then we go ahead and we reference our map variable, dot add image. And we put in our stamen terrain variable and the zoom level. And this is what the map will look like. Next, you can also use natural earth data with Cartopi. If you would like to access the natural earth website, then you can go to naturalearthdata.com. And to see the different data and layers that are available, you can go to Downloads. Then for each of the scales, you can go to Cultural, Physical, and Raster. So let's take a quick look. Here you can see some examples, such as boundary lines, states and provinces, roads, and so on. Okay, so here, in this example, we're going to use roads. We've gone ahead and created our figure and our map. Then we use C feature, and we've already gone ahead and imported that. Then we use natural earth feature. And inside the round brackets, the arguments we're going to use are category, name, scale, and face color. Now, one thing to point out, when you download these files, you're probably going to see a file name similar to this. At the beginning, you have any short for natural earth. Then in the middle, you have the scale. And then you have the title. So what you want to do for the category, you want to put in where you got the data. And that would be cultural, physical, or raster. Then for the name, you want to remove 
this part and just put in the title. Then you can go ahead and assign the scale. Here we've added some features and some colors and the extent. Let's run it. And you can see we get our map with the roads. Here we have another example using the states and provinces. And you'll notice the way we set this up is the same as this example here. Another thing you can do with Cartopi is that you can use it with shapefile layers. We're going to use a shapefile from census.gov, and that is in a folder on the desktop. Here. Okay, so the first thing we've done is we've used Reader to recognize the shapefile. Here. Then, using this code here, we're going to access the counties. Then we go ahead and create our figure and our map. We've set our extent. And to add the counties layer from the shape file, we go ahead and put in our variable here. And what we get is our map with all of the different counties. Next, let's say that you wanted to create a chart and then use an inset of the map. So one way you could do that is to go ahead and create your figure, then reference the figure dot add subplot. Here we have our actual chart or plot. And then here we've gone ahead and created our inset. Then we go ahead and we use this variable here. And for the map, we just want to show the coastlines. Let's run it. And you can see we have our chart with our inset map. So in theory, what you could do is you could create a map with certain regions and the chart would correlate or correspond to the map. Okay, for our last example, we're not going to go over this code too much. However, we just wanted to show you that you can use Cartopi with IPy widgets to create different interactions. So let's just go ahead and run this and show you what you can do. Basically, what we've done is we have created a map and we have added a set of features with checkboxes and titles that you can take on or off the map. So for example, let's just add the ocean and then let's add the land. And then you can add the borders, you can add the coastlines and the lakes and the rivers. And then if you wanted to plot some locations, you could do that as well, okay? So we've plotted some locations here and here. Okay, so that's all we have for our introduction to Cartopi. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.